This is the 5-1 video. We're going to look at randomness, probability, and simulations. And the first objective is to interpret probability as a long run relative frequency. So remember, relative frequency is just a percentage. Um, chance behavior, it's unpredictable in the short run, but it has a predictable pattern in the long run. And this is basically a summary of what the law of large number says. If we observe more and more repetitions of a chance process, the proportion of times that a specific outcome occurs approaches a single value. Um, let's take a look at an application to give you a better understanding of what this is saying. So one example of a chance process would be flipping a coin and counting how many times you get the number or the count, count the number of times you get heads. And so that's a chance process. And if we repeat that process over and over and over again, then we'd expect the proportion of heads to be about 50% of the time. And so this application is gonna help you see that probability is always thinking about the long run. So let's look at, we're gonna flip a coin and the probability of the heads, we've set it to be 50 like a normal coin. And we're gonna do two tosses at a time. And I'll show the true probability, what the theoretical probability is. And we'll toss two coins and it's going to plot the number of heads. So right now we got two tails, which means our proportion of heads is zero. And we'll keep tossing and it looks like, well, we got two more zeros or two more tails. There we go, our first heads. So if I just keep flipping these, you'll notice that it might take a while for it to actually get to 50% because in this short run, the probability is not predictable or um, the proportion of heads is not predictable. It's only in the long run. So I'm gonna increase the number of tosses. Now I'm gonna to do 200 tosses at a time. And you'll see that as we flip more and more and more and more, it's gonna slowly approach a single value. And that single value when we're flipping a coin is 0.5 or 50%. And so we flipped it 222 times and we're still not yet perfectly on uh, that 50% mark. So this should help you to see that the long run is really the, is really the only predictable value that we can get when we're talking about a chance process. In this, in this case, it's flipping a coin uh, to get the number of heads. So here is a screenshot of the app that we just used. And on, on the app we did, we actually never made it to the 50%. But if we continued to repeat this chance process, eventually, we would start to level out at that 0.5 um, for the proportion of heads. And so this is the idea of probability. It's the probability of, an out, of any outcome of a chance process is a number between zero and one that describes the proportion of times the outcome would occur in a very long series of repetition. So probability is always thinking about this long series of repetitions. And when we're calculating probabilities, we can never be exact when we're calculating the probability. The mathematics of probability is based on imagining what would happen in an indefinitely long series of trials. So we're gonna come across problems that ask us to interpret what is the probability of this? What does it mean? We're always gonna to have to refer to it in this long run mindset. So according to the first example here, according to the book of odds, the probability that a randomly selected US adult usually eats breakfast is 0.61. So what does this mean? What does the probability of 0.61 mean? So interpreting this, we'd say, if you asked a large sample of US adults whether they usually eat breakfast, about 61% of them will answer yes. This is interpreting it as a long run relative frequency. It's the long run because we're asking multiple people. So we're repeating the chance process of asking somebody if they eat breakfast or if they usually eat breakfast. And um, if we ask a, a, a large number, then we'd expect about 61% of them to answer yes. Why doesn't this probability say that out of 100 US adults chosen at random, exactly 61 of them usually eat breakfast? And this kind of ties back into sampling variability. Probability is, um, it's not predictable 
when we're just looking at a hundred repetitions. Um, there's no set number of what's the long run, what's the short run, but if we're looking only at a hundred U.S. adults, then we can't say it's going to be exactly 61% because of sampling variability. So again, the samples are going to vary uh, from sample to sample. Uh, one thing I see is a lot of people want to interpret back to A, the probability of 0.61. They want to say there's a 61% chance that a person eats breakfast. Now, the issue with that is we're not thinking about that in the long run. You're tying that to a specific one person, whereas this is referring to if we ask many, many, many people. Let's look at the second example here and match some probabilities together. So if probability is a number between zero and one, then an, an outcome that never occurs has a probability of zero. It will never happen. An outcome that occurs every single time has a probability of one. For example, if I flip a coin, what's the probability I get a heads or a tails? I'm gonna get a heads or a tails every time. That probability is one. So let's match these probabilities to the following statements. This outcome is possible, it can never occur. Zero. This outcome is certain, it will occur on every trial. That has a probability of one, whatever that outcome, whatever that um, outcome is. This outcome is very unlikely, but it will occur once in a while in a long sequence of trials. So very unlikely, um, I would say it's gonna be 0 0.01. I guess 0 0.3 is unlikely as well, but this one is more unlikely and will only occur once in a long sequence of trials. So 0 0.01 seems like a better fit to me on this one. And this outcome will occur more often than not. Uh, well, 0.3 will not occur as often because um, that's less than 50%. 0 0.6 seems to be a reasonable option here. It will occur more often than it will not. But also you technically could say uh, 0 0.99, that will occur more often than not as well. But this is, this is very likely to occur. It's just not perfectly likely. So a couple of myths about this idea of randomness because randomness and probability go hand in hand. Um, there's a myth about the short run regularity of randomness. The idea of probability is that randomness is predictable in the long run. Our intuition tries to tell us random phenomenon should also be predictable in the short run. However, probability does not allow us to make short run predictions. Um, this also kind of ties into the myth of the law of averages. And remember, this is a myth, it is not a reality. Uh, probability tells us that random behavior evens out in the long run. Future outcomes are not affected by past behaviors. This is past outcomes do not influence the likelihood of individual outcomes occurring in the future. For example, if you're flipping a coin and you happen to flip, in, you happen to flip 10 tails in a row, you're, you're going to start thinking, okay, that's been 10 tails in a row. This next one, surely it's more likely to be a heads than any of my previous flips. But in reality, it's still that 50% chance. Um, we can't predict probability in the short run. It is only predictable in the long run. Previous outcomes do not influence future outcomes.